So the pen tool, you're going to access the pen tool right here. You guys probably already are a little bit familiar with it. If you've taken the Photoshop section or a Photoshop course, they also have the pen tool. So you kind of understand the basics, but we're going to start at the beginning. We're going to do even lines. We're going to click once and notice how it's kind of hard to find the perfect point. We're just going to hold down shift and it's going to kind of snap into position going straight. And we're going to make a straight line, just like we did with the line segment tool. It's going to work exactly the same. And we're going to bump the stroke up a little bit to match the line. So now let's do, or let's continue to do this, but with different angles. So let's get that grid showing again. We're going to really be practicing this. I'm going to use my little keyboard shortcut command quotation. I, I could just toggle that on and off very easily. And I'm going to go to view and I'm going to snap to grid again. So we're just practicing toggling between that on and off. Let's get the pen tool. I'm going to hold down shift, click at any point, And I'm going to make an octagon pretty easily because now it's snapping to the grid and I'm holding down shift. And I'm able to make an octagon. I don't have to guess. I can just go right to it and it's right there. Let's go ahead and increase the stroke size. If we need to adjust to match, we can. We can go ahead and take snap to grid off. We can just do some more custom adjustments. And let's toggle that grid off. So we're able to kind of make a quick octagon very easily. So now we're going to learn how to kind of edit anchor points. So we're going to do the zigzag pattern. Let's get our pin tool again. And we'll talk about shortcuts. You can always just press the P button uh, to, to go ahead and toggle the pin tool. So I'm going to click at the bottom point. This one's going to be easy. We have snapping to grid off. So we're just going to kind of really practice doing this by hand. I'm just going to try to be as accurate as possible. Let's say I kind of mess up and I don't do it perfectly. And I mess up again. Oopsie. So now what we're going to do is we're going to kind of um, correct these anchor points or adjust some of these wrong anchor points by getting the direct selection tool. So I'm going to get the direct selection tool. That's going to be this little white arrow right here. This is how you're going to be able to access and edit all anchor points in a shape or a line. I'm going to go ahead and click on that so you'll notice I have access to all these anchor points and then of course the rounded option. So I'm just going to click once and drag it down. It's going to click once and drag it up and correct it. And I can do that with any of these if I feel like they're not perfect. I'm just dragging all of those up. And you'll notice another thing here. So you'll notice these are pointy and this is nice and round. And you notice the caps are rounded, but the points aren't. So there's another thing in your stroke panel, and it's called the round join corner. So round join, and that's going to make corners that are in the middle of a shape round, not just the caps, but everything in the middle. So I'm just going to click on that. It's going to add a nice rounded point in the middle shape. And just like that, we were able to do a little zigzag pattern, and we were able to manipulate that. So Anytime you need to change an anchor point, that direct selection tool, go ahead and select on that, and then you'll be able to access all the anchor points. So the direct selection tool is incredibly valuable. So straight lines are pretty, no pun intended, straightforward. But what about these curvy lines? That's one of the most difficult parts to master about the pen tool is being able to accurately draw nice, smooth shapes and corners, especially when it comes to rounded shapes. So we're going to get the pen tool again, and we're going to start here at the bottom. And here's what we're going to do. Let's go ahead and zoom in so we can really see what we're doing. A lot of times when I have a curve like this, what I'll do is I'll go to the apex of the curve. So right at the top, I'm going to click and I'm going to hold. So I'm not releasing. I'm clicking and holding, and I'm able to kind of change. See this little handle? They call it a little handle. And I'm able to kind of move it around, kind of match it up. And I'm just going to go all the way down. You notice it kind of naturally does kind of a, a circle kind of shape. So I'm just clicking. And this is going to take some time to master. You're not going to be able to master this in a day. This is something that's going to take weeks of practice. And it took me months to kind of really get comfortable doing nice, smooth curves. And we're going to learn all about the curvature tool and, and the direct selection tool to be able to go back and perfect our, our corners that we're making. So I'm just clicking and holding. And when in doubt, make a new anchor point. So if you feel like you don't, if I click up here and try to make that shape, 
I'm not going to be able to make it perfectly, so it's going to take two anchor points. So I'm going to click here, do a curve, just kind of doing a curve, and then I'm able to come back and kind of do match the shape a little better. So you'll see how many anchor points that I created with this. I'm going to get the direct selection tool right here, or you can just press A. And so it took what, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You can see it took about 10 anchor points to make that shape. But now that I'm looking at it, I'm like, you know, that's not very smooth. It could be a lot better. So that's why we have a couple of tools that we can use, like the curvature tool and the direct selection tool to fine tune our curves after we created them. So whenever you have the direct selection tool, it'll give you access to the anchor points, but it also gives you access if you have a curve to the handles. So you can go back and kind of adjust the handles by clicking on an anchor point and slowly changing those handles, moving them around. You can move them around. You can also adjust the handles to try to get a better match. And that's doing a pretty good job. Trying to find a little bit better smooth curves. Sometimes you have to pull it down and out to get a good curve. So right here, sometimes it's nice to have add an anchor point. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add an anchor point because I feel like if I add an anchor point there, I can get another handle and I can get more control in this little area. So I'm adding an anchor point. You can do that right here, add an anchor point, or you could just press, press the addition sign to be able to call it up. So we're doing an adding an anchor point. We're going to click right here in the middle. We added an anchor point, and now we're going to get to our direct selection tool right up here where we can toggle a, and we could just move that up. So now I have a little bit more control because I have another anchor point there to give me more control. I could do the same thing here. I'm just pressing the addition sign. When we talk about the curvature tool, you'll also be able to use that in this case to kind of help with your curves. Okay, so it took a little longer than we want, but it takes a while to do those kind of curves and shapes in Adobe Illustrator. So we're going to talk about the curvature tool. It's going to help us create those smoother curves a little bit easier uh, than just the pen tool. It's kind of, it goes really well with the pen tool. So I'll switch between the pen tool, creating anchor points, and then I'll use the curvature tool when I have, when I want to make perfectly round circular type curves. So the curvature tool, what we're going to do is we're going to convert this polygon to a circle and kind of show you how to use the curvature tool. So let's get the polygon shape out and draw a simple polygon. Flip that to fill, and let's see what we have here. So we have this, so let's see if we can't convert that to a circle. Let's make it bigger, and let's get our curvature tool out. So this is our curvature tool. It's right next to the pen tool for a reason, because these pair together, and I switch between these two very often. So here's the curvature tool. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to double click on an anchor point, just double click, and it's going to convert it to a rounded corner. If I double click it again, it'll convert back to a sharp corner. So you can see how this is going to be very valuable when you're creating shapes and you need to have a rounded corner or you want to have kind of a sharp edge. So I'm going to double click on each one of these and convert each point from a sharp point to a rounded point and voila, we have ourselves a circle just like that. So let's do that again. Right here, we're going to transform an oval to a leaf. So let's draw an oval. We're going to get our ellipse tool. We're not going to hold down shift. We're going to just drag and create a, kind of a, our own little shape, our own little oval. And let's go ahead and flip this to stroke so we can see what is underneath. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to convert these bottom and top anchor points to sharp corners. So I'm going to get that curvature tool. I'm going to double click convert it to a sharp edge, double click, convert it to a sharp edge, and I can always just click and adjust our leaf, and just like that we created a leaf. So very easy, we can flip this to stroke, or flip this to fill, and we created a leaf shape just like that. So let's do something a little more complex. We're going to be creating a little popsicle shape. You might have recognized this from um, some Instagram posts in my Affinity Designer class I did. I did a similar full color illustration with this, but we're just going to do the basic shapes here to learn and practice the curvature tool. So what we're going to do is I'm going to get a rectangle tool. I'm just going to do a simple rectangle about the size of the popsicle. 
maybe right about there. And let's do a stroke so we can kind of see what's underneath. And what we're going to do, let's go ahead and drag this all the way down to this corner. And we're going to take the curvature tool and we're going to bring this line and make it a curve all the way up to the top. It's going to be very easy to create curves this way. I'm going to click right here in the middle, just drag it up, creates a new point. And just like that, we have ourselves a nice rounded point. So let's do our corner tool. So we're going to get our direct selection tool out and it's going to give us access to our anchor points, but also to our any kind of rounded corners. If you have a newer version of Illustrator, you'll be able to have access to these. We just made it round, rounded corners on all sides. Just kind of rounding everything up and making it nice. So now we're going to create the little uh, shape, the rectangle rounded corner shapes. So that's going to be easy because all we have to do is go to the rounded rectangle tool. We're going to click and hold. It's going to have built in rounded corners. And let's change those corners. We can go right up here to shape. And we're going to be able to change, see how it's linked? When I change it, it changes it on all sides. So we're just going to change it to, we might have to manually do this, maybe a 0.1 to get the right size. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to click and drag, just hold down option and drag and make a copy right next door. I'm going to select both of these and I'm just doing just an align, just aligning to the top to make sure they're aligned. And just like that, we have kind of the center of our popsicle. Let's go down and make this part of the popsicle. That'll be easy because we have the rounded rectangle tool and that just automatically makes life easy for us. And we can put this in the back. So right now this is in the front layer. We're going to be talking about layers a lot moving forward, but we want this in the back. We want this layer to cover up that layer. So I'm just going to right click, arrange, and I'm just sending it to the back. And of course, this isn't a fill yet, so you can't really tell. So let's toggle that to a fill. And let's also make this, let's make these two shapes a little bit lighter. So I'm just double clicking my color and it pulls up our color picker. picker. And I'm just gonna make it slightly lighter and make sure that's a fill. So now our little stick is covered up. Let's make sure that's pulled up. So now that's in the back. So we'll talk, we'll talk more about this as we do more and more projects. So let's do a little bit of a shadow. Let's do just a simple rectangle tool. We're just gonna do a little shadowing here. Let's make that a fill and let's make this darker. So I'm just double clicking our swatch. We're gonna make it a little darker and we're gonna send this to the back. So you can right click and do a range and you can send things backwards or forwards in the layering system. Or you could do a, a keyboard shortcut. I really want you guys to memorize this because I use it so much. I can't imagine having to go to the layers system and collapsing this and trying to drag all these shapes. It's just ridiculous. So what you could do is use this keyboard shortcut. It's command left bracket to send things backwards or hold down command right bracket to bring things forward. So I'm just holding down command and I'm just gonna press left bracket and it's gonna slowly send its way to the back. So now I'm going to toggle this to fill and I think we just made our popsicle. So just like that we made a really cool popsicle using some very basic shapes and using our rounded corners and our curvature tool.